Hello and happy Friday, everybody. It is time for Friday Reads with me, Nina Soden, the redheaded author. And today we are talking about No One's Home by D.M. Pulley. Beautiful cover. All right, this one was released on September 1st this year. It is horror, ghost, thriller, historical fiction, or historical mysteries. I guess those would be the genres it falls into. And it is 397 pages, but it doesn't feel that long at all when you get into it and start reading it. Okay, here we go. First with the Amazon description. For fans of The Haunting of Hill House comes a dark tale of a mansion haunted by a legacy of tragedy and a family trapped by lies. Margaret and Myron Spielman move to a new town, looking for a fresh start and an escape from the long shadow of their past. But soon after they buy Rawlingswood, a foreclosed mansion rumored to be haunted, they realize they're in for more of the same or worse. After a renovation fraught with injuries and setbacks, the Spielmans move in to the century-old house and their problems quickly escalate. The home's beautiful facade begins to crumble around them when their teenage son uncovers disturbing details of the Rolling Woods history, a history of murder, betrayal, and financial ruin. The Spielmans' own shameful secrets and lies become harder to hide as someone or something inside the house watches their every move. As tensions build between the family members, the home's dark history threatens to repeat itself. Margaret and Myron must confront their own ghosts and Rollingwood's buried past before the house becomes their undoing. All right, so here's my true sense. Let's talk about the critical points. I did give this one an overall of 4.25 stars, and I will break that down for you. Writing, I gave it four stars. Story, I gave it four stars. Characters, I gave it four stars. And appearance, I gave it five stars. Right? Gorgeous. All right, let's start with writing. So, No One's Home has been compared to The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, which I read, and it's scary. This book, although good, in my opinion, it just does not compare to The Haunting of Hill House. It just doesn't live up to that hype. But again, it is a really good book. So, writing. Pulley is a great writer. Her descriptive text is beautiful, and she does a really great job of just pulling you into a scene. However, with that said, this book covers the story of five different families over five different periods in time. You've got the Rawlings family from 1922 to 1931. You've got the Bell family from 1936 to 1972. The Klossman family from 1972 to 1990. The Martin family, and then the Spielman family. The Spielman family is what is present day, the Martin family right before them. Although the writing is good and the stories are interesting, going back and forth between these different time periods only pulled me out of the story. Each time I was pulled into a story, it quickly changes, it quickly shifts, and with that story shifting, I had to take a moment to rethink, okay, which family is this, what is their storyline, figure out who the different characters were, and that is a huge distraction for me as a reader. Although I can see this story working out really well as a movie, you know, shifting from one period to the next period with changes in lighting, changes in the appearance of, you know, set dressing in the house and the costumes for each time period. I could see that working really well. It just didn't work for me as a book as well. The transitions weren't as smooth as they could be in a movie. I mean, I picture the movie with like, similar, it, done in a similar manner as American Horror Story, 
with actors playing multiple roles, you know, actors pay, playing different roles throughout each time period. I think it could work really, really well. Um, almost kind of a reincarnation uh, of the spirit sort of thing, even though I know that these characters aren't the same characters as time goes on. But it could work that way. So anybody out there who likes to produce books into movies, No One's Home would make a great movie. All right, story. Let's talk about story. I gave story four stars as well. The story is well thought out, although maybe it could have been, you know, structured a little bit better like I talked before. I think this could have really worked well as a series of short stories, a collection of stories that all take place centered around this one house, this one mansion in Shaker Heights. I think if it would have been formatted that way so that you read older stories, you know, the, the oldest family first all the way through to the modern day or maybe vice versa, I don't know. I think reading the older family first would have uh, maybe given away a little bit too much. So maybe start with the modern family and then slowly, you know, go all the way back in time through short stories. I think that could have worked really well for this one. And then you wouldn't have that problem of being pulled out of a story every time it shifted. All right, characters, I gave this one four stars. I really wasn't sure who the main character was. I mean, the, the description of the book reads as if Margaret and um, Myron Spielman are the main characters. But their son, Hunter, actually pulls more of the focus when you are reading the book. And that's okay. But then you have to consider all of the other families that you are learning about, the other four families that you learn about throughout the book. And the Spielman family isn't given that much more page time or ink time or screen time if this were a movie. They're not really given that much more than the other families, so why is that family any more important than all of the past families? So that's where I felt the characters had a little bit of an issue. I just didn't really know which family needed more focus. I think if we could have learned about each of the families separately, again, in that short story type collection, I think we could have enjoyed each of their stories and we could have learned more about their history and the history of the house. I think that would have been a little bit more intriguing for me. All right, appearance. I gave the appearance five stars because gorgeous cover. The cover is absolutely beautiful. It even has the same feel as the cover to The Haunting of Hill House. Although this one is more blues and that one is more of an orangey yellow. Whoever designed this cover did a phenomenal job. I have to give them some credit. The creepy old house on the cover with the single light on in the attic really does draw you in. I noticed this one on the shelf the instant I walked past it, and even before reading the back cover, I knew that I was going to pick up this book and read it. So that to me is the sign of a really successful cover design. All right, a little bit about the author. D.M. Pulley lives in Northeast Ohio. This book, this story takes place in Ohio, so that makes a lot of sense. She lives in Ohio with her husband and her two children and a dog named Hobo. Before becoming a full-time writer, she worked as a professional engineer rehabbing historical structures and conducting forensic investigations of building failures. Her structural survey of a vacant, vacant building in Cleveland inspired her debut novel, The Dead Key, which was the winner of 2014 Amazon Breakthrough Novel Award. Since then, she has sold over a half a million books worldwide, and her work has been translated into eight different languages. That is amazing to me. All right, her historical mysteries shine a light into the darker side of life in the Midwest during the 20th century, when cities like Detroit and Cleveland struggled to survive. Her latest novel, No One's Home, unravels the disturbing history of an old mansion haunted by family's secrets. 
financial ruin, and murder. Down in the comments below, I have included a link to my blog post that has this review there. It will also tell you some descriptions of her other books, The Unclaimed Victim, The Dead Key, and The Buried Book. So be sure to check out those books as well. If you have not yet read No One's Home, make sure you check it out. It's available in ebook and paperback, of course, my favorite. This has been Friday Reads with me, Nina Soden, the redheaded author. If you like this video, click like below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you never miss a video. I wanna know what you thought about this book too, so comment below and let me know. If you've read any of her other books, comment below and let me know which one I should read next. All right, everybody, until next time, happy reading.